Welcome to the Green Hills Area Education Agency. Each day, hundreds of cars drive past this campus on Highway 92 west of Trainer, Iowa. Little do they realize, this site has a little known, yet very interesting, military history. In fact, the buildings were originally constructed as part of the U.S. Air Force Nike Missile Base. So join us on this discovery of a hidden history of the Nike Missile Project. The Nike Missile Project was launched in 1953 during the Cold War as a defensive strategy to guard Offutt Air Force Base, located near Bellevue, Nebraska, against Russian attack. The project was the first operational anti-aircraft missile system in the United States and was named after Nike, the Greek goddess of victory. The Nike missiles, armed with nuclear warheads, would be launched at incoming Russian bombers approaching from the north. After radar targeted Russian bombers, the missiles would then launch and then detonate in the air at an interception point to disable the plants. The U.S. Air Force built 240 Nike missile bases across the country as a last line of defense against air attack. These bases were built near strategic and tactical sites like Offutt Air Force Base. Construction of the trainer site began in 1958 and the base was operational until 1964. It was strictly a defensive site. Like all Nike missile bases, the trainer base was supposed to be mobile so that it could be dismantled, placed on trucks and trailers, and moved to a different location if needed. Unfortunately, the Nike missile technology was outdated almost from the time it began. At the time, the trainer location had the most powerful radar in the world, reaching 250 miles. 100 soldiers were stationed at the trainer site, which included the radar command unit with early model computers, which were the size of a double closet. The soldiers who monitored the radar were called scope dopes. The soldiers who kept the missiles shined and clean were called pit rats. The trainer location also included barracks, a mess hall, a pump house, a paint storage shack, a generator building, guard dog handler quarters, radar towers, and sewage lagoons. One of the soldiers stationed at the trainer Nike missile site was Private Jerry Fields. Jerry was a scope dope who worked on the radars. He enlisted for the base in 1961 because it was close to home. He spent two years at the trainer site. He earned $72 per month. They practiced drills so that they'd be able to fire a missile in under 15 minutes. Once per year, they would go to Fort Bliss, Texas to actually fire a Nike Hercules and Ajax missile. However, because it was peacetime, the soldiers spent a lot of time mowing the grass and painting the speed bumps in the parking lot. I joined the Army in January of 61, and I enlisted for this base because it was close to home and I was supposed to spend a year there and then be transferred to Japan or Germany, where we had Nike Herks. But the trouble was all the guys that were there stayed there. But the guys that were in Alaska, uh, Okinawa, and South Korea, and then there was a gem, Thule, Greenland. That's the places you got sent because they wanted home. But it was a Nike Herc outfit. I got there in April of 61. And it's this was a defensive missile. It was strictly to shoot down incoming bombers. The ones in Missouri Valley were the ICBMs that went across the pond. We were strictly defense. And we were really good at it. We got every one of them. Of course, none of them came, thank God. But uh, yeah, I was there two and a half years. I was a scope dope. I run a radar. But well, we had to be able to fire a missile in 15 minutes. So we had to practice this drill or fire order over and over and over. And the first thing was my radar was uh, elevation. I would have to find him, his, his height, and I would lock on. Then the range radar would find how far out he was. They would lock on. This went to the acquisition radar which he would lock on and send it to the computer. Now the missile radar knew where the missile was. We hadn't even fired it yet. So it found it fast, but the rest of it took a little while. And then they'd all go through this computer. The computer was the size of a double closet. And then they fired the missile and away she went. Once a year, we'd go to Fort Bliss, El Paso, Texas. 
Okay. And we would actually fire a Nike Herc and an Ajax missile. And certain groups, uh, we had two crews, uh, and the best crew went to uh, uh, Fort Bliss to be evaluated. And they would just fire them down range. There wasn't a target, they just fired them down range and hopefully uh, pretty fast. The faster you could do it, the better. And then they just blew them up down there. I got to, I was on the switchboard, that crew. I got to go outside and watch them blow up, which was quite a fireball at night. As you've just learned, the current Green Hills Area Education Agency campus has quite an interesting background. From its beginning as a Nike missile base to its current use as an education support agency, location has been instrumental to Southwest Iowa. So the next time you drive by on Highway 92, remember the historical past, this site, and the soldiers who have served there.